five years. Just imagine what that would mean in terms of warm homes, lower bills, lower emissions, more energy security. Let's consider it in money terms first. Tracks will get these subsidies until 2027, totally wasting all that money, as well as all those trees and all that carbon and all the effects in England and around the world in terms of human rights, people losing their farmland, water pollution, air pollution and everything else. Even in terms of money, we will keep on paying year after year. But with insulation instead, after five years, we would still be getting the benefit. And as fuel prices go up, we'd be saving more and more every year. But that's just in money terms. Let's look at it in human terms. Every winter, around 10,000 people a year die in this country from cold homes. This last winter was very cold, and they're expecting the figures to be around 13,000. That's one every seven minutes. It doesn't happen in Scandinavia, and it isn't any warmer there, but they do have insulated homes. Besides the people who die, thousands more are made ill by the cold and damp. You get coughs that never end, respiratory problems, cardiovascular problems, arthritis, depression, suicides, and just not wanting to live anymore. Of course, pensioners are the most vulnerable. We're often home all the time. You don't move around as much. Also, your body thermometer kind of packs up and you may not even realize you're getting cold. And many people with disabilities, younger people with disabilities, are in the same situation. If you don't go out to a job, you have to pay for your own heating 24-7. That's why you find a lot of elderly people making themselves inconspicuous in shopping centers and libraries. And that's why Fuel Poverty Action have helped organize warm-up protests where we go en masse into one of those places to say that if we can't afford to heat our own homes, we have a right to hang out in any warm building. But it's not only pensioners. Lots of teenagers suffer mental illness as a result of cold homes, which is not exactly a surprise when whole families are crowded into one room and students are trying to do their homework under their duvets. For any of us, it's no way to live. And why are we living like that? Because there's more profit to be gained from building and operating power stations than there is from insulating housing. It's not because it has to be that way. It's not because money is short. It's not because energy is expensive. It is a choice. Now, I'm speaking to a movement audience here. And I want to say also, I have to admit that I'm also uneasy about some of the choices that a lot of us have made in the climate movement. Because a lot of us haven't really focused on energy saving in the way we should. And I'm just trying to understand this. For, forgive me if I'm not clear or if I diss anybody who shouldn't be dissed. But energy saving got kind of a bad name because it became known as changing light bulbs. People started to feel it doesn't matter what we do individually while choices are being made like building and subsidizing drags. It's not true. It does matter, but you can see the point. You feel you're not going to really solve it that way. But of course, if it's done on a mass scale, like insulating all the homes of people in fuel poverty, or even schemes like the Warm Front that this government abolished, that would make a major difference. But the Warm Front was abolished because there was too much take up, too many insulated roofs, too many boilers. And the prospect of energy efficient homes has really been diminished by the realities of the housing market. You can't get a landlord to fix a broken window, let alone insulate. They can throw you on the, out on the street for no reason at all, if you even dare to ask. And at the same time, council flats are being torn down all around us, and they're putting up new bills. And there's supposed to be an energy efficiency standard set for new bills. But no one is enforcing it, so that's not what's happening on the ground. We're in the hands of cowboys, cowboy builders, cowboy landlords, cowboy governments. When I say cowboys, I'm not just talking about the little ones, I'm talking about the big ones. Like the energy companies, the builders, the landlords, 
governments and the governments are only interested in profit. I don't know, maybe it's as a result of these obstacles that the fight for insulation has largely been diverted into things that only benefit people who own their own homes and can afford to do them up, and transition town improvements of middle class neighborhoods. Not entirely, of course. There are still lots of other people focusing on energy efficiency, but some of the more radical parts of the climate movement. For instance, Reclaim the Power, which I'm part of, which is holding this camp from the 29th of, May, of, April, of May to the 2nd of June. Some of these more radical parts of the movement so far have tended to focus more on renewable energy and not always making clear that we mean really renewable energy, not biomass, not nuclear for God's sake, have tended to focus more on renewable energy than on insulation and energy efficiency, energy moves which would make energy unnecessary in the first place. Personally, I think we really need to make this central and I'm very grateful to Biofuel Watch for bringing out these calculations for the sake of people in fuel poverty and people suffering climate change, they really need to be pressed home. Thank you. Hey!